the key imaging features that alter the management are the involvement of the pre epiglottic space, paraglottic space, and the post frequent region, where we might need multimodality treatments such as chemo radiotherapy. Erosion of the inner cortex constitutes T3 disease, where again multimodality treatment can be used, however, surgery is not indicated. Destruction of both the cortices or extra laryngeal spread constitutes T4A disease. These are the patients who are candidates for total laryngectomy. Extra laryngeal spread through the thyroid membrane without destruction of the cartilage constitutes T4A disease. These patients can be managed by trial induction of chemotherapy prior to definitive radiotherapy. Extra laryngeal spread invading the carotid artery or the prevertebral fascia constitutes T4B disease and these patients are unresectable. Few other imaging features that influence the management and have implication on to the uh, plan, planning the management of this patient are the epicenter and the chronic cordial extent. The epicenter and cranial cordial extent is important for RT planning of this patient. The size in three dimensions that is the AP, cranial cordial and mediolateral are also important for RT planning of these patients. Volume if indicated by the clinician have an prognostic implication. Uh, volume more than 6 cc in the supraglottic region and volume more than 3.5 cc in the glottic region are poor prognostic indicators. Transglottic spread of the uh, disease also helps in planning the surgery. Pre-epiglottic space invasion, minimal versus extensive, uh, lead to implication into the um, laser versus CTRT in these cases. Anterior commissure invasion are notorious diseases and can lead to early involvement of the thyroid cartilages. Even though they appear to be T1 on the imaging, they may be T3, T4 on the actual invasion pattern. Posterior commissure diseases, uh, the involvement of the posterior commissure is an contraindication for laser surgery. Retinoid and cricoaretinoid joint invasion also contraindicates use of laser in such patients. Cricoid and aretinoid sclerosis or destruction constitutes T4A disease and such are the patients for surgical management. Subglottic extension anteriorly more than 10 mm and posteriorly more than 5 mm are contraindication for uh, cricoid preservation and these patients are candidate for cricoid uh, resection. Hyoid bone invasion, though rare, can influence the type of surgery and extra capsule spread and regulation to the carotid artery have both prognostic and therapeutic implication. Let's see some of the examples. In the first figure, we can see a small volume right area epiglottic fold lesion without any invasion of the pre-epiglottic space. This is an early T1 malignancy. In the next figure, we can see minimal invasion of the pre-epiglottic space this is a T2 disease. In the third figure, we can see a large nodal mass with necrosis. Probably, an, uh, it's, it is a malignant node with probable extra capsular spread. And there is a uh, right area epiglottic disease which is involved in the pre-epiglottic space with extensive invasion of the pre-epiglottic space and this constitutes T3 disease. In the next figure, we can see that there is involvement of the post required region and exolaryngeal component. This is a T3 disease. In the next figure, we can see that there is white line of the cartilage, large volume glottic disease with invasion of the paraglottic space and exolaryngeal component uh, with less than 180 degree abutment of the uh, carotid artery. This is T4A disease. In the next figure, we can see that the invasion of the uh, cartilage is extensive with extensive involvement of the uh, visceral space. And in the last figure, we can appreciate the large volume disease with merging with the nodal mass encasing the carotid artery and invading the prevertebral fascia. This is T4B disease. It is very important to know that the cartilages play an important role in the management of this uh, laryngeal malignancy. Inner cortex alone is a candidate for chemoradiotherapy and outer cortex involvement is a candidate for surgery. The signs uh, of cartilage involvement of on CT are abutment erosion, lysis and transmural extension. Mere abutment and sclerosis is a highly sensitive sign but the specificity is very low. It can be due to reactive changes along the tumor boundary and should not be used as a definitive criteria for assessment of cartilages. The uh, true presence of erosion, lysis and transmural spread are the indicators of the uh, cartilage involvement and if seen on the outer side, these patients are patients for surgical management. So in the first figure, we can see that, that there is abutment of the cartilage with mild sclerosis. That is the, uh, a sign which is uh, very sensitive but very less specific and can be due to reactive as well, which I have already discussed. In the other set of figures, we can see mild erosion to extensive invasion of the cartilage. These are the candidates for surgical management. As I mentioned that MR is a problem solving tool in management of laryngeal malignancies and these are the examples where MR might help as a problem solving tool. 
In the first figure, we can see the cartilage is not ossified. The white line of the thyroid cartilage is seen. There is an enhancing tumor on the CT which is involving the paraglottic space. And MR in such case, in this case, shows that the cartilage is normal and there is only involvement of the paraglottic space. And this is a T3 disease. In the next figure, second row, we can see that there is white line of the cartilage. There is suspicious involvement of the uh, visceral space, which is definitely seen on the MRI. So MR upscores this patient to T4A and this is a candidate for total laryngectomy. Sometimes even PET can help in picking up thyroid cartilage invasion and pre visceral space involvement as seen by the uh, arrowheads which are showing SUA max into the pre visceral space which is uh, similar to the uh, malignancy in the glottic region. So tells you that this is a T4A disease. In the last row I am highlighting the uh, notorious anterior commissure disease because these diseases are close to the region of the boil's ligament attachment where the perichondrium is deficient. These diseases are known to involve the outer cortex at an early stage. These can be uh, appreciated as T1s but actually are T3 and T4 disease. And one should bear in mind that the anterior commissure disease needs to be evaluated with uh, bone wind bowl algorithms as well as the MRI. So to conclude, I would say accurate staging is essential for optimal management of carcinomas of the upper aorta tract and larynx and communicating the radiological stage effectively needs adherence to the checklist of the positive and negative findings which I have already described which have therapeutic implications. Thank you for your patient hearing. <laughs>